Welcome guys to another episode of Fake News. You know how we do it. This is the show that talks about all you need to know of fake news. What fake news is, where is it from, how does it affect you and I, how does it affect the country, how do we avoid it, how do we report it, this and many more. Stay with us, we have lots of fun for you today on this episode. And this particular episode we'll be talking about how to identify fake news. So fasten your state backs, not go anywhere. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> Welcome back from that break. Like we said, Fake News Show, I'm your host, Frank Donga. The creation of fake news continues to generate a lot of discussion, and you know, it's not surprising that many people now doubt any source of news, you know, while others have very serious bias for any kind of information, especially online. Now, although there are news outlets that are more credible than other ones, but the challenge of identifying misinformation, disinformation, or if you like, fake news, faces all of us in the face. So we come in contact with different messages on our phones, computers, newspapers, books, radio, television, even billboard. Fake news became very rampant or more used, especially when the US president, Donald Trump, became the president of the United States of America. You know, he accused different news sources of being fake news. People started using that word more. You know, different terms popped up, like political correctness, uh, correctness, alternative facts, you know, speaking your truth, a white lie relative to post-truth. In fact, you know what it's in truth be? That's the situation when people tend to believe their own bias and uh, you know, uh, emotions rather than scientific fact or data. A few months back, even in Nigeria here, we started seeing text messages all over the place claiming to be from Central Bank and they wanted to block our accounts if we didn't update our account number and you know, probably give your password. A lot of people fell for that scam. It was scam. It was fake news. It wasn't news from Central Bank. But how do we identify fake news? Hmm? How do we make sure that information will come across, how do we verify, how do we see a piece of information and know that this one is oh, real or you're not real. In fact, in 2016, that uh, uh, post-truth that I described to you, that people tended to go with their emotion or bias instead of data, became word of the year in 2016 for the Oxford Dictionary. Mm -hmm. Confirm one. But in the midst of all of this, how do we identify fake news? That's what this episode is about. Don't worry, I assure you are going to enjoy this particular episode of Fake News Show. Today, right now, we are going on the street to sample opinion of our people, not to South, East and West, on what they think about identifying fake news. If you see fake news, you feel no harm. On the street, we'll be right back. Fake news. Because I know that all these people are for one man. Because I can't just receive those type of message like that. Because when I'm getting doing my things, I know what I do. You understand? That is why if you send me a message now, I will, you, when I go through the message, I will know that this message is coming. If I hear news, then I would like to google it and check maybe it's real or not. At least if it is real, before you know it, everybody is already away. I know it. When it comes to my phone. I know this one's a scammers. No, I, I want. I, I, I may have to. I may have other ways of ascertaining whether or not what I'm hearing is true. Thank you for staying with us and welcome back from on the streets. People talk, oh, people get opinion, oh. <laughs> oh boy, an official. <laughs> Here on Fake News Show, we tell you everything around fake news, misinformation, and disinformation. And next, we're going to be having a chat with a special guest. Yeah, we have a special guest that's only talking to us. Guess who the guest is? For today, we have a journalist and media expert. He's going to be talking on the issue of recognizing fake news or misinformation. All right, let's talk to Deji Adekunle. We'll be right back on Let's Talk. Welcome back, guys. It's Fake News Show, and you know how we do it on this show. This is a segment where we do Let's Talk. Let's talk about what? Let's talk about the issue on Grand. And who are we talking with? We promise you now. You know how they do now. It's me. You are? Mr. DG. Adekunle. 
He's a deputy program director, program officer for Fremont Science Center for Investigative Journalism. I'm Nitin Nelly Komoto. Mr. Deji, you're welcome, sir. Nice it's a you. pleasure. I'm glad Good to be here. The show. Yep. What exactly, in your opinion, is this fake news? Yeah, um, fake news, basically, it's, it's the general term for any piece of information that appears to either be totally false or a bit misleading. Um, and it's really a politicized term thanks to the U.S. president. So, mm. so that's why everybody, everything that we see now, we just say it's fake news. Yeah. Um, but I like to look at the problem as a term we call information disorder, which is a, a big problem that we have to contend with in our generation. That sounds like a big technological disease, information <laughs> disorder. Yes. It sounds like something to worry your laptop or yes, your hard drive. Uh, you worry social media, worry everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, yeah. I mean, fake news is not a small matter in worry gone. How do you know if the information coming to you is fake, real, or twisted or not? Or twisted. The first and the best protection when it comes to taking in information is to be naturally skeptical. Mm. Skepticism, just don't trust information. No, no, first, no, just no trust anything. Hmm. So just make sure that your first reaction to anything, any message you get is to ask, is this true? Who said it? Who is the source? Is it a direct or what we call primary information? Is this person the person that wrote that message or is he forwarding to you from someone who forwarded it Mm. to someone else and someone else. So yes, at the end of the day, them say, them say, gossip talk. No, mm. no, no. Because the consequences are very real. So you have to be sure about what you're reading before you even now go ahead to even share. Yeah. yeah. Let alone help out. <laughs> Why does he fake gist the sweet? It is sweet. Uh, if it's sweet too. If it's sweet. Because uh, we all have biases. Mm. And most times, we share the news that aligns with our own personal bias, whether it be religious, whether it be tribal, whether it be moral. As long as something is sounding like, ah, um, so they're talking about an issue, maybe it affected you negatively the day before. You say, yes, this, this is the truth. Now, which are the experience? Mm -hmm. So most times that bias, it makes it easier for you to accept something as true. And people who peddle fake news make, um, take advantage of that a lot. So that's why most times the news, that's why you have to have that. It's something you have to develop over time. There's nobody above fake news. Nobody. How does this thing, how does this start? Where did the manufacture this thing? Okay. And who are the people manufacturing this? That's, that's where the problem is. So we, we have three different types of information problems or information disorder problems. So we have misinformation that everybody says. Mm -hmm. We have disinformation and then we have malinformation. Mm. Big big English. Don't 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 yes, don't, down don't down worry. Down. No, like no. But yeah, I will simplify it. I will so bring them down. Misinformation. Yes. We have disinformation, disinformation and we have mal information. That mal information is like nine big part. Oh, more nine big, nine big. That disinformation. So ah, disinformation bad, yeah. Maybe not in the rappers we use. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so misinformation basically is the one that all of us participate in. When you are not sure whether it's true or false and you just forward it or you just tell somebody, here say, you can be a victim. Everybody is a victim and a perpetrator. Mm. As long as you are not sure and you share the false information by mistake, you are participating in misinformation. What if you say, bros, I'm not sure, but I like say I hear say. You have shared it. Hey. You have, you have helped spread it. We are shaking. <laughs> so adding copied or forwarded to the end of a WhatsApp message does not justify you spreading that WhatsApp message. But you journalists, we could do answer now. Ah. You say we're according to reports just reaching out, unconfirmed sources say... No, not the confirmed ah, unconfirmed sources. sources. Ah, that's not... We're here uh, to confirm that. Journa I, I, journalists shouldn't do that, please. Uh, <laughs> shouldn't do it. Yeah. Now, let, yeah. Me, let me talk more. Please, don't use unconfirmed sources. Verification is key. It's a key element of journalism. It must be steeped in accuracy. Verification. It has to be. Very good. Thank you very much. Now, how do you identify... Exactly. Fake news. Fake news. Like I said, first skepticism. Then when you do that, you look at it. The first question you always should ask is, what is the source? Just like when someone tells you something, you say, how do you know? Who told you? You have to be sure that this source is someone 
who is competent enough to speak on that matter. It's not, I have a friend who's, who is the brother of a pilot and he knows how the plane works. Mm -mm. Because he's the brother of a pilot doesn't mean he knows how to fly a plane. So you have to get your information from someone who is competent enough to give you that information. So when you hear sources, they have to quote. When you read news, you have to ensure that it's quoted from someone who is either an eyewitness, who is either in the office, who is in a position of authority, not just authority, who is close to the news. Okay. It's not just about the name. So somebody in an office doesn't might not be on the ground. Mm. So the first responder to a, an emergency medical case is the most competent person to give you information on the state of the person when they met him, not the head of the hospital. Like, say maybe Gardner now, you know, to see your guy won't marry another wife. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that. I don't, yeah, don't okay. be me, you go hear that so one from. So, I laugh, I Okay, now. So, you know, now we're, we're going to tell us what exactly are the, are the tools, you know, that are available for But hold that thought because we're going to a short break right now. All right. Then we'll come back. <laughs> Yeah, as we continue. Sure, you have not heard that Pepe is curing coronavirus. It does not matter. They already said this. All this pepper, then gang, and not help anybody. Uh -huh. It's just to maintain who I Who told you? WHO people have already said it. Just wash your hand. You understand? Wash my hand. Wash your hand, front and back, inside, beside it. Wash it all on tar, under running water. That's all they say we should be doing. At least somebody like you now in this kind of office, you're supposed to know <laughs> more than somebody like Abuse me, oh. I want to sneeze, eh? Pepe, oh, where's so my mask? So all these things I wear mask, oh. I wear cap, oh. It's just to make sure. No, Welcome back guys, it's fake news show and on this segment of Let's Talk, we have been talking, talking to who? Adeji, Adekunle, and he's been telling us how to identify fake news, in case you don't know, he just carry G's forward to you. Uh, thank you very much for coming to the show, fake news show. Still a pleasure to be here. Before the break, you were telling us how to identify fake news, the first, very first thing being, you must be from a credible source, or a verifiable yes, source. a verifiable source, yeah. Either the person that is involved in the story, yes. or the official voice of that person of the office, yes. or an eyewitness. Or an eyewitness, yeah. In our case now, because of tech, tech has disrupted the space, so we have to deal with more than just quotes in the news. Mm. Social media is a big factor, and um, most of the disinformation or misinformation we get, we get it on our phones on our social media platform. So the best ways to check them um, first has to do with the platform and also has to do with the form in which it comes. So the way you want to verify um, an article is different from the way you verify a video or a picture. Mm. Um, so for tweets, they're, they're, you can always find um, who tweeted it first. So on Twitter, when you see a tweet, you have to trace the first person who tweeted it. Um, then for pictures, um, there's, there's a tool called um, T9. So the tech is called reverse image search. So there are multiple tools that can do it. You can use Google reverse image search, which is easy. Just type reverse image search on Google. Wait, wait, let's calm down. On Google, I'll go to the internet browser. Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll open Google and type reverse, reverse image, image search. Okay. Yeah. What it does is simple. What it does is it combs the internet for everywhere that same image has shown up, whether in, in its entirety or in parts. Mm -hmm. So like if they take a picture of us and they just cut one of us out and merge it with another picture mm -hmm. and publish it, that's, that's part of what people do in this information. If you put it in a reverse image search, it will go, it will find the original picture. So, and there, that's not the only tool. There's Teen Eye, 
there's T I N E Y E. C I N E Y E. Yes, and there's also Rev I. So it's always it's about the eyes now, looking at the pictures. Yes. Open eye. So that's that's a very good way to to do to verify pictures because that's very common. So there's there's uh, news about violence. People take an old picture of another fight and republish and say, We took these pictures, they're killing people here. That's the most popular thing that happens. It's very easy. Once you do a reverse image search, it will show you old versions of the picture, edited versions of the picture, and you will see probably most times find out that this picture has been on the internet for like three, four, five, six years, and they keep bringing it back over and over again. Sometimes, especially during elections, a lot of things happen with information. Mm -hmm. You see some websites publish on stories, or somebody quotes a website and says, the story, this is the story. Normally, on Twitter, anything happens, you say, what's the source? And you put the link. Yes. Then you go to that link. To how do we even know that even we say somebody just for night, mm -hmm. just go borrow laptop? Package just websites. package websites. How do you want to know? How do we know? Yeah. Maybe this, source information, this website is credible and has been in existence for long. How do we know? Yeah. So this goes to information literacy. Mm -hmm. We have to get our information from credible platforms, at least platforms that face consequence. Um, you shouldn't use just any site or any blog as your evidence. Use someone who, who will face consequence if he gives you bad information. So, so you get something to lose. Yeah, someone that has something to lose. So as much as people maybe criticize the mainstream newspapers of maybe not doing enough and all, mm. there are consequences when they get it wrong. Yeah, because they know they drop them as they hurt. Exactly. Sometimes so, so now on, every t on Twitter and Instagram, with the CM, say this person has just done this or has just said it. Said they will go. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because maybe what, you know what they are doing it. then? Mm. They are verifying. They're verifying. They, go verify they have to. They must they verify. Go pass. They see they verify. <laughs> okay, that's a different case. But really, yeah. So you have to be sure. Check if okay. A, a, an easy tip because there exist websites that are for fun and for peddling r false information just for fun. Yeah. That's the thing about the internet. There are hackers who hack for fun. Yeah. There are people who do bad things on the internet, not even because of money, just. Okay. For fun. So what do we do when we fake things like this comes over and you verify, you verify? You have to look at the site. Most of those sites are identifiable. It could even be a satire site. Okay. Or a parody site. You, they are identifiable. When you look at the headlines, like none of this is these are jokes. This this is not you get hard no, news. It's not, illegal. it's not illegal. That's the thing with freedom of expression. So you some are satire, satires are fine, you can miss you can inform indirectly to inform people indirectly through satires, but there are fake news sites that clearly and clearly are just for, for misinformation. So you have to take your time. Another tip I like to give people is, go to the About, about Us page. Some, some sites will give you the, um, their address, their office. Um, mm. Some will even tell you their team. Mm. So there are people to hold address, accountable, office, address, office, phone team, numbers. phone numbers. People you can call to about verify on the About Us, of on the about us of news websites and legit. to check if they are legit so that you don't just take information from anybody because websites, blogs, millions are created every minute, not every day, every minute. Everybody, as we speak, they have created hundreds of blogs as we speak. So um, it's just what we have to deal with. Okay. So we just have to be skeptical, like I said. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. I wish, I wish we could go on and on and on. Oh, yeah, yeah. We can't exhaust it. Maybe the thing, you know, yeah. the type person. But at least we thank you for some things you've said. Mm -hmm. um, identifying fake news, you need to get a, a background check on that. Make sure it's the person that is involved that it happened to yeah. or a direct eyewitness. Yeah. Although that one later, we have to bring you back on the show so that you can talk to the eyewitness. That is it. Now, for my eye, the thing happened. <laughs> that's, that's a sweet discussion because... Um, all you have to do to catch a fake eyewitness is to ask him three follow-up questions. So, so you say, ah, the guy died there. Okay, how? W what kind of car hit him? Then the guy will say, okay, I'm not sure. Um, now my guy, we been dead there. Now he just tell me, say, now one car hit the guy. Mm. Because that's how we like gist. So, so you I just have to ask one or two follow-up questions. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. DJ Arikunle. It's been yes. a pleasure having you on this show. Don't go anywhere. Better than after this break.
hanginde? Are you recording? Hello, hi. They say some people people are spreading fake news all around. Some of you you receive a WhatsApp blockers message before you know you have you have, you have received it. You did not verify information. Some people even put it on blog. Spreading fake news. All the, all, all the, you think it's right? That thing you are doing. No, you think that thing as you are, as you are spreading the fake news. You think you are doing you are doing right thing. Stop spreading it. You should stop it. Resist that uh, temptation that will make you spread fake news. You verify information before you post it. Rubbish. Cut. I need to cut. Cut the video now. What happened? Am I not the one do it? I said I finished. Welcome back. And if you're just joining us, you're watching Fake News Show. I'm your host, Frank Dunga. And we'll be talking about fake news and how to identify it. We just had a chat with a journalist and media expert, expert Deji Adekunle, of Premium Time Center for Investigative Journalism on how to identify fake news. He talked about a whole lot of things, reverse Google image uh, search, uh, talked about uh, fact-checking and places where you can fact-check, and you know so many of these things. We also have CDD West Africa, our proud partners in this show, they debunk news, and there's so many places where you can find out correct information. But now, eh, you don't cast, because you get news, we don't cast. We CDD West Africa, don't ready to open, bust, debunk to you. Check out these materials and see for yourself on debunking fake news. CDD Fact Check Report. Fake News Alert. The Trump released names of politicians who hid public funds in U.S. banks. A WhatsApp message alleging that the President of the United States, Donald Trump, released a list of names of Nigerian politicians who hid public funds in U.S. banks and has been trending since September 14, 2019. In the same vein, much earlier on March 23, 2017, a Facebook user with the name Usman Kabir Mohammed shared a similar post on VOA Hours' Facebook timeline with 27 names, mostly people seen as an opposition to the incumbent president, including former Senate President Bukola Saraki, former Ekiti -E State Governor Ayodele Fayoshe, current River State Governor Nyansom Wike, whose name was badly misspelled by the false news peddler Nelson Weki. A similar list with almost the same names banks and amounts was also posted on a popular forum known for sharing fake news, Neraland, on September 21, 2017. There is no official word in the press to corroborate this claim. Yes, that was Idon Cast and CDD West Africa that helped us with debunking those fake news and uh, how to identify fake news. You know, so many things are happening. We need to be sure of what we consume in terms of information. Join the conversation about ending fake news around you. Do you have a personal experience about fake news? Would you like to share with us? Send us a tweet. Send us a direct message on social media at CDD West Africa. Tweet your thoughts with the hashtag Stop Fake News or Fake News Show. You can also send a message to me personally at Frank Donga. I'll respond to you. Fake News Show is an initiative of the Center for Democracy and Development, CDD, West Africa, with the support from USAID through the National Democratic Institute. Next week, I'll have an episode to look for you on Fake News Show. We're exposing more fake news on this show. On behalf of the entire team, thank you for watching. Don't spread fake news. It's your host, Frank Donga. Stay, join us next time on Fake News Show. Initiative of Center for Democracy and Development with support from USAID through the National Democratic Institute.